Hey guys, welcome back to 11 Cups. So it's actually been a while since I uploaded a video. Things have just been really busy as uh, my daughter's growing up. So I just decided to spend more time with her. Besides that, my room pretty much has been completely taken over by all of her stuff. So it actually creates a lot of obstacles when we try to find a room, uh, like a space to, to shoot it. But it doesn't matter. The main point is I've been trying to spend more time with her, trying to not miss those precious memories during her first few months. And now with that said, for today's video, I want to share a couple of tips to help you get a better cup out of the Kalita Wave. All right guys, so I've been using the Kalita Wave Carafe ever since I first started making pullovers. And for those of you who have seen my previous videos, you are probably familiar with this. While I have also used the V60 as well as the Chemex, I keep coming back to the Kalita Wave. And this is partly due to its complexity. And of course it's because it's something I have been using since the start and thus spend more time trying to perfect. And so for this episode, I want to share a couple tips as well as my general suggestions on how to get a more consistent result using the Kalita Wave. First of all, it's good to know the difference between the three popular pour over methods, starting with the Chemex. The Chemex have the thickest filter paper out of all the three methods. And the reason for that is because the Chemex filter is designed to remove all impurities out of the coffee, leading to what is described as the cleanest result out of the three methods. Secondly, the V60 is loved by a lot of coffee enthusiasts due to its ease to maintain a consistent result and just the plethora of recipes that are out there. And just like the Chemex, the water flows right through the paper filter without any resistance on the bottom. As a matter of fact, the V60 have the least resistance out of the three methods. And this obviously means that the main source of resistance from the pour is the coffee grinds themselves. And thus comparing the three methods, the V60 will also require the finest grinds out of the three. And now coming back to the Kalita. The Kalita have the most resistance out of the three methods. This is due to the water not being able to directly flow through the filter and straight into the carafe, but rather additionally have to pass through the three holes on the bottom of the filter holder. This means that this method involves one more factor than the other two methods, and therefore it makes some coffee drinkers, especially those who are new to pullovers, shy away from this method due to its added nuances. But like I said in the beginning, I really love this method, and hopefully this video will help those of you guys who are getting into the Kalita Wave or are deciding on a pullover unit learn to love it as much as I do. To start off, there are three common materials that the Kalita Wave is made out of. There is the ceramic, metal, as well as glass. The metal variants, whether being steel or copper, will obviously be the most heat conductive, and with the ceramic and glass being slower at conducting heat. Hence, it's a good idea if you decide to go with a glass or ceramic unit to preheat the carafe, especially the paper filter area, with hot water prior to starting your pour. Now, the version that I like in particular is the glass version, and this is largely due to the fact that I can see the flow of coffee as I'm making the pour, and I will discuss a little bit later in the video on why that is important, but that is just my personal preference. I prefer the glass one. It just helps spotting the minor mistakes easier, and therefore I can make some small adjustments as I go. Now, before I get into the specific tips for Kalita Waves, it's good to understand a couple of general factors that affects any pour over method that you decide to go with. One of the first factors that you will have to consider is obviously the recipe. Now, there are quite a few options as far as recipes concerned out there. Some are pretty popular, some are a little bit more experimental. So it's actually a good idea for you to go through and try out the, the various recipes and see which method taste the best to you. I'm not here to say one is absolutely better than the other. For example, for the Kalita Wave, I have often used the 4-6 methods that are generally used by V60 users, and I've been getting quite a good result using the Kalita Wave with it. So that's what I do. The normal go-to ratio is around 1 to 17. If you want something slightly stronger, you can go for 116. Or if you're like myself, who often use very light roast coffee, I sometimes go even lower to about 115. But again, play around with those ratios to see which one suits your taste better. I know some home users, especially for pullovers, they use a blade grinder. Now I just want to put it out there that blade grinders can work in some situations, but it's very, very hard to get a consistent grind from a blade grinder. So I highly recommend getting at least a manual hand grinder uh, for this task. And of course, as a basic rule of thumb, the finer the grind, the more the extraction. So think something like an espresso shot. And coarser usually will lead to less extraction over a longer course of time. 
So think something like a French press where the grind setting is typically the coarsest, but it is also immersed in water for a much longer period of time. Now, when it comes to pour time, you should aim to complete your entire pour in about three to four minutes. Now, one factor I don't really hear being discussed that often is something called turbulence. And this is something that I actually learned from counterculture. Turbulence basically means how much movement are there between the coffee and the water. With French press obviously being the least turbulent, going with a recipe where you take a spoon and stir the coffee will obviously introduce the most turbulence. And the reason why this is kind of important to keep in mind is that with any pour over method, the stronger the water flow will naturally lead to more turbulence and therefore it will affect the result. And that is why a good gooseneck kettle is recommended just because it's the most restrictive in terms of water flow. So being able to fine tune that water flow will be a big help in getting consistent results. Next item to keep in mind is the water temperature. And I think for a lot of espresso drinkers, you're probably familiar with this. If you have a darker roast coffee, you typically want to have a lower water temperature. And for a lighter roast coffee, you typically want to have a higher water temperature to increase the extraction. Now, an interesting method, especially if you have a temperature controlled carafe like the Stag EKG, is that you can actually bring the water all the way to boil at 212, just because the entire unit along with the coffee grinds are much cooler than the temperature that they desire. So it's good to boil it all the way to 212, make the pour, and then from the second pour forward, you wanna set your unit back down to a 205 or 208, or whatever it is that you are working with with your given recipe and go forward from there. And this will also help a lot with getting the consistent cup. Last but not least, I want to talk about the water. The water that you use will obviously affect the taste of the coffee. The more mineral that is in your water, the harder it will be to extract. So depending on your local water source, you might want to do something to change the water quality. And so for myself being in New York City, I've been using the Brita filter and this has worked well for me for both the pour over as well as espressos. Now I also want to quickly touch upon the process methods. The two most commonly found processing methods are natural and washed. Of course, there are other more experimental methods, but, but by far natural and washed will probably be the most common. So therefore, without knowing anything about the origin of the coffee or the method of the roaster, it's good to know that generally speaking, washed will bring out more of a classic coffee profile. For example, chocolatey and nutty. Whereas natural will bring out more of a berry and fruity sort of floral profile. All right, so finally, when it comes to making coffee with the Kalita Wave, one of the first thing you gotta understand is that the Kalita Wave have a very unique paper filter shape. As the name implies, it's in sort of a wave shape. Now, the reason for this design is that this is meant to keep the coffee grinds away from the wall of the paper filter. So one of the first thing that you wanna be careful with is pre-wetting the filter. As most people know, pre-wetting the filter is really to get rid of that paper taste. What you can do is actually just taste the water that just came out of the paper filter to see if you can actually taste any paper taste. In some cases, you will actually taste little to no difference. And the reason why I say that is because if you don't actually taste the difference, I would suggest to not pre-wet the filter. Since changing the structural integrity or the geometry of this wave pattern too much, it will tend to have a bigger impact on the taste. And this actually leads to why I like the glass carafe, just because I'm able to see if I mistakenly crumble any point of the wave pattern. Next, before you actually start to add coffee, if you have a carafe like mine with a metal piece like this, just place this on the carafe as straight as you can. There was many times in the beginning when I didn't notice the lip of this little metal piece was resting on the mouth of the carafe and it resulted in the entire top portion being slanted to begin with. And you really want to try to keep this as level as possible because you want to have an even flow through the three holes in order to ensure even extraction throughout the entire process. Now, of course, if you want to pre-wet your filter, this is when you do it, but I'm just gonna go ahead and add my grinds in. Now, one thing to mention about the grind amount is that if you have a bigger carafe like this one, you probably don't want to work with any grind that is 35 grams or less, just because due to the size of it, it will lead to a much thinner ground bed. And when you start the pour, it's easier for the water to just penetrate through the entire ground bed and resulting in some under extraction. So just keep in mind the size of the carafe that you wanna purchase. If you normally only make coffee for yourself, just go ahead and get the smaller size so that you don't have to make so much coffee at once. Next, before you pour, it's a good idea to go ahead and use your index finger and just make a small dent in the middle of the ground. This I find to help a little bit in preventing the ground from bubbling up too much towards the center. So then of course you want to go ahead and start your pour. So during this step, what you want to do is monitor the flow of the coffee coming out of the three holes. If you notice certain holes is flowing much faster than others, 
you want to go ahead and slightly adjust the paper filter so that the three holes are flowing out at a more or less even speed. This is actually a great way to know that your filter holder was on straight so that you're not extracting one side with more water than the other. Continuing with your pour, you want to go ahead and look out for uneven flows and of course check to see that the wave are not collapsed because if certain part of the wave pattern are collapsed, generally means that you probably pour a little bit too hard towards the edge and that ended up disturbing the geometry of the filter. And once again, we're doing this because the purpose of the wave pattern of the Kalita wave is to keep the grinds away from the wall of the paper filter. And if a particular side is sticking to the wall of the paper filter and that side will have a slower water flow than the rest, again, this will lead to unevenness in extraction. And of course, at the end of it, just gonna go ahead and remove the paper holder and be left with your coffee obviously. So when it comes to tasting the coffee, you will know that you have actually done the pour correctly if you start to taste sweetness in your result. When you start to get that hint of sweetness in your coffee, then you know that your settings are close to where it should be. Since everybody have different grinders and different beans at home, so it's hard to say definitively which one setting works for everybody. So just go ahead and dial in your settings based on taste. So if you want to go ahead and fine tune your settings from that point forward, a general rule of thumb is if you taste sourness or like a tartness, think maybe like a like an unripe banana, the tartness, the sourness. If you taste that, go for a finer grind because it's typically a sign that your pour was a little bit under extracted. And on the flip end, if you taste too much bitterness, then go for a coarser grind because that would typically mean that your pour was a little bit too over extracted for your taste. Although do keep in mind before you find that perfect setting, try to change one variable at a time. So if you are changing the water temperature, don't change the grind setting at the same time because you want to pinpoint exactly where the issue is and be able to fine tune it to exactly where you want it to be. So anyways, that is it for this episode. I really hope that you guys found these tips and suggestions to be helpful. And of course, hopefully it will lead to a more consistent result on your end. And as always, please take a moment to hit the subscribe button if you have not done so already. Be sure to like, share, and comment. And I'll see you guys on the next one. Bye.